Okay, welcome back. Hi, this is Stella from Better Life. Glad you guys decided to join us this morning. I had a few technical difficulties with that first feed, so we tried to reset it. So um, we're back. Now this morning, what we have been talking about was the progression of the word Kail. And we were talking about the correlation of that progression, that there are three key ways that that word is used in scriptures. One of the first ways that it's used is in the context of army and we said that we moved from the context of army armies elite army warriors troops then it makes a shift and then you see another connotation where it picks up and it goes into valor and then it starts to giving descriptive terms descriptive ways that we connect so we've got valiant valiant warrior forces and so now we see that a big part we know that a big part of the understanding of Kail is the understanding of being a warrior of the army of being a part of the troops yes we got that and then we talked about a part of that is being uh, is how we approach warfare with valor uh, courage and all that but then we see where it makes a shift into the word the meaning of wealth now here's the key that I think a lot of people have missed when God takes you into a battle, his assumption, his goal is that you win. And if you are not ready to win, then God won't take you into a battle. And we know that because that's what happened with the children of Israel. When he left them out of Egypt, God was most concerned about the mental capacity of the Israelites. And when they, they and you know, were they ready for a fight? And he realized that they were not ready for a fight when they left Egypt. And he was so concerned that he left them on the, he led them on the longer route because of their lack of mental toughness. So now let's go back to what I was just talking about before we broke. Remember we said that your identity is rooted in the finished work of Jesus. That's he was wounded for your transgression. So you, you identify with the healing work. You identify with the salvation. You identify with the kingdom, which is the righteousness, the peace, and the joy in the Holy Ghost. You identify with the authority for I, he has given us power over all the enemy, over all the uh, works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We identify with that. We identify with uh, we identify with well all of those things that empower us in the kingdom of God. That is your identity, okay? And you get to identify with those elements because those are the things that allow you to exercise the authority to manifest the healing. Because it's a it, you need to know your identity and who you are in Christ, okay? But now your persona is different. Your persona is you. It is how you are perceived as in, within yourself, but there is also another persona, and that is how you are perceived in heaven. Now, I said earlier this week on that broadcast called Becoming Kail that when I first went to my internship with Patricia King, and it's the first day in our class, and one of the first, our worship session, and she walked in and she hugged my neck and she says, oh my God, you have so much spiritual authority, you have so much authority, and I didn't understand, what I was like, huh? I didn't understand what she meant, but I understand now because my uh, my authority and that 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 had been developed in the place of prayer. It had been developed in intercession. It had been developed in the in in the times of fasting. It had been developed in time in the Word and all of that. But what has to, had had not happened was that my persona, how I perceive myself in the earth, how I perceive myself in the kingdom of God as me, and how I perceive my and, and then how I am perceived in heaven. In other words, how God looks at me, they were not congruent. So my self perception is a part of my persona, but there is also a part of my persona which is kingdom related. It's how God sees me. So when God God said in Jeremiah 29 11 he said for I know the thoughts that I think towards you that word think is present tense so that means God has ongoing thoughts about who you are and he has a perception of how he sees you and what you can do in the earth and so becoming Kail is about making this progression now we talked about the armies and then we've talked about the wealth but what I want to talk about today are the words of capacity and enablement that most people don't even touch 
Okay, because most about 25, 30 percent of the time, Kyle is translated is translated with words that give you the capacity to bring your earthly persona into alignment with your kingdom identity so that you can become the God so that you can so that you can grow into the person that God sees when he looks at you. Let me say that was as a children, let me say that again because that was good. It was I know that was good. This is better. That was better than y'all y'all responding. I hope my feed is working. Cause listen, let me say it again. When you're looking at the last elements of Kyle, these are words that have to do with capacity building and personal development and enablement. Because in between aspiration and manifestation is the season of your development. So the last category, about 30% of the time, Kyle is translated is words that relate to capacity building and enablement. It's translated as uh, capable, noble, power, strength. Um, able enablement so now what we see then is that in order for you to take your kingdom identity you have to have the ability to recognize the development in your spirit man what I did not recognize when Patricia said you have so much kingdom authority I was praying and I was building myself up in my most holy faith but I wasn't able to translate that into results and outcomes in the earth realm because I didn't understand the connection between establishing the spoken word and taking the spoken word and converting it into declarations and taking those declarations and converting them into to task and assignments and taking those tasks and assignments and converting them into results and outcomes. So now that's a progression. And so, yeah, you can be in the army. And yes, and you and, and when God takes you into a fight, into a war, he expects you to win. And now, but when he expects, in order to win, you have to have some capacity to go into the fight. So now we understand that there are certain things that, that empower us to do, to build the capacity. And now, now, now we can start con connecting that to some natural insight that a lot of people don't want to touch on. Because in the kingdom of God, there are principles that relate to our ability to capacity and to expand our capacity. We need to expand our capacity for leadership. We need to expand our capacity for, um, for personal growth. We need to expand our capacity for business development. Development. We need to expand our capacity for financial acumen so that you can start uh, so that as you build wealth and you acquire it or as you get a great job you and, and, and you understand that that job is the first stream of income. So now the first area of Kyle, yes, it's about armies. It's about fighting. It's about warfare. The second area, yes, it's about wealth and resource because when God takes you into a battle, you are expected to win. Now, in order to win, you have to have the capacity to win. You have to have the capacity to take that wealth and you have to have the capacity to overcome the enemy and bring your identity your personal and earthly persona and your kingdom of persona into one. That's becoming Kyle. I, I can stop this video right now because that's, that's it. That's what I came to say today. Now, do I need to repeat that? Let's go ahead. Now, what I want you guys to do this time is I want you to take some notes. I want you to go ahead. So let's review. Becoming Kyle. We recognize that as people are teaching about Kyle, they're teaching about the components of being a part of an army. They're teaching about the components of being a warrior. They're teaching about the components of valor, okay? But now, as you look at the progression and the evolution of that word, that word, the word warrior is associated with the word wealth because when you go into a battle, there is spoil and you are expected to take the spoil from the battle. Now, why do you need the spoil? The children of Israel came out of Egypt with spoil. Why? Because they needed the spoil to establish an economy. They needed the wealth to establish an economy. They needed, because when you go into a region, you need to be able to go into that region. Now, they, you, they have their land that they occupy, but there are still other territories around them. There are still other, other tribes of people. There are still other, other kingdoms. And so, 
when you move into that region, you want to be able to negotiate with those people and buy their goods. Because in your region, you might have gold on your land, but you may not have wood. And so when you looked at when they got ready to build it, when, when David got ready to build the temple, when, when Solomon, David started acquiring all of these resources. The children of Israel came out of Egypt with spoil because they needed wealth and resource to establish the, to go ahead and establish an economy. Well, what does God say in Deuteronomy 8.18? It is the Lord who gives us power to get wealth so that we can establish his covenant in the earth. Now, the, what may, so why do we need to establish a covenant? Because when we establish establish his covenant. When you have money, people pay attention. Okay. That's what's that passage that says money answers all things. Money is one of the things that generates influence in the earth. It solves a lot of problems. It reduces, it eliminates issues so that now we understand that becoming Kyil is moving from that warrior, but it is also, it is also capacity building. Now, what are some of the capacities that we need to build so that we can begin to acquire the wealth so that we can begin? See, the church has been good about fighting. I mean, we go, we, you know, you spiritual warfare. We have all this teaching on spiritual warfare and the church is real good about talking about wealth, but they haven't taught people efficiently enough that there is a progression to increase that in order for you to acquire wealth, there is a process that there is, there are laws of money that those laws of money govern your ability to obtain it, your ability to maintain it, your ability to sustain it, your ability to grow it and expand expand it, your ability to keep it. And then after you keep it, you need to be in position to pass it on to the next generation. And while you're learning all of that stuff yourself, you better be teaching it to your children because you spend your life building up wealth and resources, mastering real estate, and then you die and then your kids lose it in 90 days. See, that's the kind of stuff that we are not teaching. Okay. So talking about what, the, what is the progression of the understanding of Kail? Becoming Kail. Kail is three components. It is three components. So when we do those first components, that's the component of the warrior, the troops, the, the valor. The second component is the wealth, the riches, the goods, the substance, the fullness. But the third component, which is necessary to make the to manifest the first two, is the whole capacity building. It's ability, enablement, excellence, might, greatness, nobility, power, strength. All of those are things that are necessary for us as we are becoming Kyle. Now I can begin to connect my identity, my earthly persona, and my heavenly persona. Now, let's tell the last thing I'm going to talk on is that heavenly persona and how God sees me. So we know that in Jeremiah 29, 11, God knows for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts to give you a hope and a future, thoughts to bless you and, and you know, and, and, to, and to not harm you. So we know that God's thoughts towards us is all good. He is all good. Okay. He, he wants, he has good thoughts for us. He has positive thoughts for us. He has words of encouragement for us. He is all good. Good, okay, that's how God is. Now, God deposited unique gifts. That scripture, when he says that he talks about the hidden riches and the treasures, you know, I will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Now, what are the treasures? The treasures and the hidden riches in secret places is inside of you. The treasures of darkness and hidden riches is not just hidden riches in the earth realm. They are divine ideas, witty inventions, innovative ideas and concepts to solve business problems. They are downloads. One of the best examples of those, that kind of, of this particular idea in manifestation is George Washington Carver and his expansion and exploration of the peanut. Okay, he prayed and asked God for wisdom about a particular thing. So now when we're looking at this whole thing and talking about armies and wealth. Now let's get to this last portion about capacity building in order to cultivate anything and expand it to the degree that it allows you to become a force, which is one of the meanings of Kyle in the earth realm, a force to be reckoned with is the ability to cult to, to, to mm, thank you, Jesus. It's down, it's, I got to slow down because it's coming so fast. 
is the ability to take an idea to get with God in the realm of intercession and in prayer until God takes that idea and shows you how to expand it. Now, I've seen this happen several times throughout my own life. And I'll tell you the first time, one of the first times that it happened, and I knew it was happening, was when the Lord gave me the idea for the program that I'm even bringing back now, the Customer Service Academy. At that time in my life, I, I, was, I had just come off welfare. My son was about 18 months old. I, uh, I, I was, I had just launched my business in the middle of being on welfare. I, you guys, it's on my testimony. You want to go to my, go to my YouTube channel, hit my testimony, type in the words, my testimony and my name, Stella Payton, and you can see the whole testimony. But in that season, but while I was in that season, in the middle of it, God told me three things. First, he told me, I want you to start a business. Now get this, I'm on welfare, getting a check for $490 and $150 a month in food stamps. Okay, I was evicted from my house, so now I don't have a house. I got a 490 AFDC, and then on top of that, somebody stole my car and ran it into a tree. So now I've got three things. Whenever God is doing stuff in your life and he's getting ready to move, I'm telling you, the enemy recognizes what is coming, so he comes out all against you. That's where the warrior component comes in, which is why you have to gird up the loins of your mind. In spite of the circumstances that you see, you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep taking one, putting one step. Half the battle is staying in the fight, putting one step in front of the other, saying, Lord, I know there's a lot of crap in my life right now, but I'm going to keep digging this crap because of where all of this horse manure is, there's got to be a horse somewhere. And so you look at life with that persona, think, with, that, with that mindset, thinking, I have to overcome this because God has given me a promise. Now, you remember I told you, if you got a problem, on the flip side of that problem, there's a promise. And if you got a promise, on the flip side of the promise, there's coming a problem. And so the Lord showed me as I'm in this circumstance, he began to reveal to me that he wanted me to start my own business. And so I did. I started a business in that season. Shortly after I was evicted, I, I, I went and found a another place and I'm telling you within 30 days of being evicted from one place the Lord the Lord opened the door for me to get a nicer townhouse a bigger townhouse and it's just a little bit more money but he moved me in there I got at that time I think I got the only child support check I had ever received in the whole time and my son 25 years old I got one child support check okay now, now not to say that his father never did anything else I just never got it in the form of a child support check so let me make that clear that's that's that I'm gonna fix that so now this is all happening. This growth is occurring. Now, a part of my development as a warrior in that season was in spite of the circumstances that I was looking at, God had told me to start a business. He had told me he would give me specific instructions. He was training my ear to hear and he was teaching my hands to war. Now, that war was war becoming a warrior in the marketplace because I had never had a business before. I'd always worked for other people. So in the course of starting that business, then the Lord really led me into a, a, an organization. In the, it was a city provider, a job development, a Los Angeles City job development agency, which needed some training for their constituents. And in that moment, God gave me a download for the Customer Service Academy and how to structure this program in a way that it took seven days. It not only took seven days, but our placement rate for the city of Los Angeles one stop was 100%. Every student that Community Bills sent into my program, 100% of them for every single academy was hired. Everyone. That's the, so now we're talking about taking back the marketplace, entering in the marketplace. This is where the first part, yes, it's a fight. The second part, yes, you need to acquire wealth. The third part, however, is where you will have to, and I will have to expand our capacity to acquire the knowledge that we need, to acquire the disciplines that we need, to acquire the relationships that we need. One of the meanings, for, and for example, uh, when it comes to wealth building, the word, uh, Deuteronomy 818 is the Lord who gives us power to get wealth. The word who gives us power, the word, the word power there is coac. It means the ability and capacity and the resource to do. Coac. The ability, the resources, the power, capacity to do. So if God gives us the power, the coac to get wealth, what he is saying is there are nine resources you need to build wealth. Nine resources for wealth building. 
And that if you don't understand, if we don't master these nine resources and understand how to use them, you can preach wealth all day long. Talk about Kaya wealth all day long. It's not going to come. Why? Because the your identity is spiritual. That's the finished work of Jesus. Your persona in the earth is who you are, how you are, how you connect. It is your discipline, your integrity, your heart, your energy, your passion, your motivation, your aspirations, your desires, your hopes, your dreams. It's your work, in your, your labor. It's your skill sets. It's your, your uh, attributes, how you approach a task, all of that stuff. That's your persona. And how people perceive it. When they look at you, they see all of that stuff. And when you look at you, you see all of that stuff. Now, if it's just a little bit of stuff in that persona of you basket, and you have low image of yourself like Gideon did in the wine press, Lord, I'm the least of my father's house. Okay? That's going to be an issue for you coming into alignment with your heavenly persona. Because God sees you as he, like he said to Gideon, you great and mighty warrior. And Gideon was the, in his mind, I'm the least in my father's house. So now we've got an identity with God and we've got a heavenly persona. But then we got a guy down here on the earth who thinks small of himself. And that's the thing that's got to be fixed. And to fix that, you need the third components of Kail, which is really about capacity building and enablement that nobody talks about. Everybody talks about the war. Everybody talks about the wealth. But ain't nobody talking about the capacity building and the enablement that you need to cultivate the wealth and to, and to be disciplined enough as a warrior. Because you can go to bed. There's a difference between a soldier and, and, a, and a warrior. A soldier, you put a gun in his hand and send him into battle. But a warrior, you put a gun in his hand and a sword in his hand, he will go find a fight. Okay? He will go find, he, you know, he will find a fight. Why? He looks for the just causes. He establishes the righteousness that God wants to release in the earth. And then he looks for those just causes that God has equipped him to take out and overcome. And he will stay in that battle until, it, until he wins it. And then when he wins that battle, he doesn't just win the battle and stop fighting. But after you fight, the work of taking the spoil just begins. In every battle, there is spoil. And so whatever battle you're going through, you need to determine what am I supposed to take out of this battle as my spoil. Some spoil is emotional and mental development is acumen. Some spoil is greater capacity to overcome coming to defeat an enemy some spoil is financial resource some spoil it could be a house it could be land it could be real estate and property some spoil whatever you have to identify the spoil that should come out of the battle that you're going through some spoil is strength in your health some people go through a physiological battle and they come out of that battle with a, in a physical fight with the enemy over their health and they come out of that battle with our, I'll never forget Graham Cook's testimony where he was attacked with a brain virus where he couldn't even think he couldn't remember he could a lot couldn't remember his name he couldn't put together a sentence and on the other side and in the midst of that fight he said some days all he could do was lay on the floor and worship because he couldn't think and all he could do is worship and just worship and this went on for a number of months until one day he as they they got the virus out but then he needed restoration in his mind and he said God told him he was going to give him a new brain and one day he said Graham said that the a warmth just poured over him and all of a sudden all of his thoughts all of his creative energies all of his mental acumen came back ex and exploded back in his mind that was spoiled that was spoiled so now when you look at this progression of Kyle and you look at the the meanings of the word yes it means army Yes, it means warrior. Yes, it means valor. Yes, it means fortress. And yes, it means wealth. Yes, it means riches. Yes, it means goods. Yes, it means substance. Yes, it means fullness. But it also means capacity, ability, enablement, excellence, might, strength, power, and the ability 
to take that capacity, build it into the infrastructure of your persona with intentionality because persona is you. It's how you are perceived. Now, persona is how you perceive you. It's how others perceive you. And it's how God perceives you. Your persona is not your identity in Christ. These are two different things, okay? Your persona is the unique package of goods that you are in the earth. It's what you bring to the table. It's what you, as you, as you maximize every, L, every, thank you, that as you maximize yourself at every level, all of us have a higher self. All of us have a version of ourself that is overcoming, that is powerful, that is disciplined. We all have the ability and the potential to reach that level of persona. We have the ability to marry how God sees me and how I see me and bring myself into agreement with that. But it's going to take the third focuses of Kaya, which nobody talks about, capacity, ability, and enablement. We, we, we're not talking about that. And that's the work part, okay? It's easy to fight because you can go in your bedroom and pray in the Holy Ghost for three or four hours and you can build yourself up and become a mighty fortress in the spirit. But that doesn't necessarily translate to results and outcomes in the earth. And that's where my other book, um, She Lives by the... Hang on. Yeah, this one. She Lives by the River. This one is about the capacity building elements of Kyle. This one is about manifesting that scripture and she and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in her season and her leaf also shall not wither. What do all those words mean? What is it that Jeremiah 20 that Jeremiah 17:5 you guys you know I talk about that all the time. You see how this stuff connects so now that I'm understanding it is my capacity to expand myself and to grow and to develop, which gives me the insight I need to access the wealth and the resource. And once I'm trying to go for it, yes, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be opposition. Like I, as I was endeavoring to access the wealth and resource and launching my own business, I got evicted. My, my car was stolen. Um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff broke, broke loose. But I persevered through until I got to the other side of that. And then God started really opening doors for me. It was just amazing, just one door after another. And one of the first contracts I got for self-development and training and launching the Customer Service Academy, it was a $20,000, it was a $17,000 contract, then a $20,000 contract. And as they say, the rest is history. Until to until today, and so now you have to once you obtain that stuff, you have to have a strategy for maintaining it and retaining it. And to some degree, I mastered that, and to other degrees, I didn't. So now you go back and you make the adjustments. It's all about building capacity. Well, I am I'm out of time now. This act actually, I started this broadcast twice, and the first one, so I started over. So you guys remember when you're talking about Kyle? Yes, it means warrior. Yes, it means valor. Yes, it means bravery. And yes, it means wealth. But the area that most people are not discussing is that it means capacity and enablement. So capacity, ability and enablement. You need the capacity to get wealth. You need the ability to fight and you need the enablement of the grace of God to allow you to come and see that's what, oh my God, there's so much more. That's a whole nother thing because do you know the word grace means? Grace is not unmerited favor. It's not, I mean, it is favor, but it's more than that. The word grace means, the word grace means the, uh, the it is the the presence of God upon you and within you. It is the power of God upon you and within you. And it is the ability of God upon you and within you that enables you to be what you were created to be. That's your heavenly persona and to do what you are called to do. That's your personal ability being manifested out loud on the earth. So grace is God's empowering presence, enabling you to be who you were called, created to be and to do what you were predestined to do. It is the ability to access Jeremiah 29 and 11. So I have thoughts that I'm thinking. So what is God thinking and how do I get his thoughts from, get his thoughts from his mind into my life? 
That's a whole nother teaching. I want to say thank you guys so much for logging on with me today. Now, would you do me a favor before you get off? Would you share this video for me? We go ahead and share it so people can get this word. I love you so much for being here with me. Remember, I am coming to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I will be there in a couple of weeks. I'll give you more details. And oh, by the way, I believe I'm supposed to be on with John Eckhart. I've got the, I got a call and I'm waiting on that confirmation. So be watching John Eckhart's post on the teachings about Kyle. That's what reactivated me. You know, I had, I had gotten into other stuff. I had to go back and pull my books out. And yes, the Kyle woman, I do have copies that are available. We're working on my website website by the way you guys so if you go to my website this weekend hopefully we'll get that work completed by tomorrow night but we were doing some work on my website re restructuring some things um, but go ahead check it out you can see this still up it still works I love you guys so much Mwah! and until we meet again you make it a terrific day bye bye